the object is the poetics. And the essential thing here is, of course, typical of English. Uh, two of the words of this short uh, sentence are not really English, as you realize. Object is Latin, and it's just like a thing, but it has an enormous difference. Normally, one should use them in, uh, interchangeable in English, but in fact, many people wrongly believe that when they say object, they say something more abstract than when they say a thing. But in reality, object is Latin, and it has the advantage that it has it made of two parts, ob and ject. And object means against, throw against, to throw against. And to throw against, it always implies, a kind of figure of ground implies something. That there is something because one makes a difference. And then poetics, again, it's not English, it's come from oasis, which is uh, uh, Greek, and it means to make. So, uh, this is the title of a poem by a French poet called Francis Ponge, who, um, I don't think I need this thing, uh, who actually uh, borrowed it from uh, Braque, uh, the poet, uh, Braque, who uh, invented this uh, Picasso um, cubism, in fact, uh, coined this expression, the object of the weather. And why is it so meaningful uh, for me, and I hope for you too? is that it suggests that if there is something in the world, that something in the world has not been there, as it were, to begin with. It is something that uh, one, as it were, uh, throw in, something that one creates in some way, one make. So it suggests that the world that we live in is a world that is uh, constantly being made. Uh, and it is up to us, and that is the contribution of arch architecture, contribution of art above all, to make that happening. That is to say that if you make something, it's not because it's already there, but it is possible because you have the capacity to make that thing. Now, there are two uh, points of view here, of which I want to represent, uh, present to you today. You see, essentially, the most important thing for us as human beings is to find certain equilibrium between our inner life and our outer life, between the external and internal. Adolf Gauss was one of the architects who believed that life consists in that, in that balance, that culture is no less, no more than the equilibrium between the external life and the internal life. Indeed, because internal life could hardly exist without something outside, which corresponds analogically in some way to the something which is inside. If I have to, if I am capable of feeling something or experiencing something internally, then it must be something that I can then project and I can find something that supports it from the outside. <coughs> One, another way of saying it is if man does not have, as it were, the central gravity inside himself, it is out there, and therefore we are so dependent on those, on this making. Now, some believe, as uh, most poignantly was expressed by Heidegger in 1936, when he no longer was director of uh, Freiburg under the Nazis, because he found the Nazis not radical enough, he uh, retired from his job, and he gave a lecture in Basel called the Origin of Work of Art, the Ursprung der Kunstwerk. Origin, in that sense, is conceptual origin. And in that, uh, in that uh, lecture, he suggested that, in fact, uh, the role of art is to uh, present what is the case, what, what is true. He used the word the Greek word, aletia. Aletia, again, is a Greek word, which means unconcealedness. The a is the not concealed, the aletia. Aletia is the Greek word for truth, which is already, in the word itself, you have the idea that it is never there, it, were, it, has, it, it is only to the extent that it is unconcealed. And he produced the example of the Parthenon, an example of a poem, an example of 
the famous painting of the shoes of, uh, of Van Gogh, which initiated a big discussion whether the shoes were Van Gogh's own shoes or whether the shoes were of a peasant. Be it, it as it may, the point is that, that the, the belief that art has this capacity by making to make it present, to make that which is not yet present. Years later, after the war, he gave a famous, again a famous uh, discourse, which he called, which is called in English, Concerning Technology. And in that discourse, he presented a thesis which was exactly the opposite. In that thesis, he introduced a, a German word that was translated into English as in frame. In frame. In frame, he meant by in frame that, in fact, that to having made so many objects, having produced technology on such a large scale, and so that uh, has been part of our life to such an extent that perhaps we are no longer able to uh, exercise, <coughs> exercise our capacity to make, or if we are making, we are no longer making that which is which can function as an aletia, as an unconceivedness, but in fact, of, in fact of achieving that kind of openness that this suggests, uh, instead of this openness, we are completely enclosed and framed within a world which is, which is substituted all other worlds, the world that is uh, claimed by technology and its <coughs> Implication and application. So you can see immediately there is very important antithesis uh, between these two positions. And uh, I will try, and uh, in the next uh, few minutes, I will try to um, uh, convince you, if I can, that uh, one should not take this uh, position as an absolute, and that in fact, the possibility of making is the precondition perhaps of all art and architecture. Uh, it was, is, and most likely will be a position that is not easy to, um, um, to uh, defend, of course, because all of you, as you know from your own experience, uh, can hardly uh, or not easily uh, <coughs> allow themselves the kind of freedom that is required in order to practice that kind of poesis, that kind of making. And I think that is indeed the crucial issue for both art and architecture. And I think that one of the things, that there are many ways to achieve the condition uh, that permit uh, the exercise of uh, making in that sense. Um, Gaston, the American painter, says that uh, John Cage said to him once that when he begins working in his studio, he's surrounded by everybody and everything. And then, if he's lucky enough, this uh, slowly disappear until such a time that not even he is there. And that is the moment when something uh, can happen. Whether it was Cage who told it to Gaston, whether it's like Gaston who told it to Cage, doesn't matter. What does matter in this description is that there are special conditions perhaps that permits it. And I think that one of the most important conditions that permits this moment is precisely that contact which we um, establish in, in such a workshop. And that is the great <coughs> merit of uh, getting out of your um, ivory tower and make this connection with uh, life in the most uh, rudiment forms. Because life in the most rudiment forms brings to our mind those conditions perhaps more than anything else. And I think that 